Hey guys, what's happening? It's uh, Vintage Drum Restoration Garage, and we're uh, we're gonna make a little uh, decision on what to do with this drum here. As you remember, uh, we have this drum that's oversized, and let me um, emphasize: it was not only out around; it's a lot closer in round now, but it's oversized and let me show you what I mean by that because um, there's a few people who seem to be of the mind that you could just <clears throat> oh, you could just um, peel the well sand the white marine pearl down a little bit and the heads will go on fine that's not the case here friends and let me, let me tell you what I mean by oversized. Here's more of a modern drum here. This is a Tama, uh, what is this? Uh, I guess this is a superstar snare drum, probably from the 80s. One of these. And, um, and modern shells are, you know, they're, they're a lot more undersized than vintage shells. And you'll see here, this shell is under 14 inches, all right? It's more like about 13 and 15 sixteenths, which is perfect to get heads on. And look at it, it's really round, this drum. And I only took the heads off this drum just so you, I could give you a demonstration of what we're up against here. And then the heads float on these drums, meaning that the collar hoop does not touch the shell here. And given the, uh, the uh, drum a little bit more ring and less choke. So we'll put that drum aside and let me just, uh, oh, a lot of you guys are wondering what that sound is. We're, we're up against a little bit of wind here. So I've got this up above here. I've got this um, it's a uh, as a vent up here in the roof <laughs> so anyway I don't even hear these it's like living uh, next to a freeway after a while you just don't hear these things but some people commented what is that sound that's the sound it's windy here in Phoenix today and it's warming up too Okay, so what we're up against here is, if you measure this shell, we're at 13 and 15 here, 13 and 15 sixteenths here, but directly across the other way, we're at 14 and an eighth. So even if this drum were in round, it would be oversized. It would be somewhere in the in the neighborhood. If it was perfectly in round, it would be still 14 and 1 16th, which is oversized. And you're not going to get heads on that too easily either. So what we're up against here is having to... What I think is going to happen here is we're going to take this white marine pearl off and uh, sacrifice it so we have a, a shell that's will fit modern heads. And some people have commented, oh, you can get, uh, you know, different companies make different heads and uh, they're under oversized and they'll fit and but the thing is that it's not a one size fits all when you're coming to sound you know just because one head fits on a drum doesn't mean that's the head you want on the drum right it might be a thin head and you don't really like that sound and just because the head fits on it well you're not going to get your sound so what i'd like to do is have a, a drum that would accept any head within reason any modern head and then you can get your sound and you're not uh, limited to choice uh, of one um, one head so 
what I've decided to do is I'm going to take this white marine pearl off and I've uh, had quite a few folks just say let's let's see this contour you're talking about and we're talking about contouring the shell down let me show you just uh, contouring the edge down a little bit on both both edges because the drums out are uh, oversized on both sides of the drum this side and this side so we'll contour it down all the way around and as we're contouring we're going to measure it oh by the way white marine pearl is if this was a really rare finish let's say if it was let's say it was like mardi gras or uh, You know, gold veil or, well, this, that wouldn't have been around during this period, but let's just say it was some really rare finish, like Oriental Pearl or, you know, something really rare, Top Hat and Cane, if they made that. They didn't, but let's just say. Then you'd want to leave this drum completely alone, but this drum is, it's just your basic white marine pearl, so, and the pearl's not that great. So I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice it. I've made the decision. Not something I usually like to do, but that's what we're going to do. So let's get to it. I'm going to start taking this white marine pearl off. And I'll just take uh, take this. Uh, I've just got a, a chisel here. And I'll carefully go around here. I'm not really trying to save this white marine pearl. It's just not that big of a deal. Um, but uh, let me let me remove this badge carefully, and I'll come right back at you. Okay. Well, we got um, there's white marine pearl. <clears throat> I guess we used to call this mother of toilet seat pearl and um, I grew up in LA back in the 60s 70s and there used to be a saying that said the only time you want white marine pearl on anything is on a toilet seat so that was the logic around back then was you took a drum and you got rid of the pearl off of the drum because supposedly that was uh, that would cause the drum uh, to choke up, and everyone wanted a wood grain drum back in the 70s, and that was kind of the theory, and I suppose there's some truth to it. But that was the joke sort of thing going around back then. So let's measure this drum now. Let's see where we're at. don't exactly know exactly where okay so you got 14 and 1 16th here and directly across 14 nearly 14 let's take a head and put it on take one of these aquarian heads I don't know I don't care for these heads that much but um, I just like now I see it won't fit it won't fit on this drum so we're gonna um, we're gonna contour this drum down, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find out where the widest point is. So that's 14 and a sixteenth there, and I'm gonna really measure around. Look at your not just just a, a few inches. This is the this is the heaviest part right here. 14 and a sixteenth. Let's see over here. Now you're down to 14. This is the widest part. And I kind of want to keep the shell looking the same thickness all the way around. So I'm going to be very careful when I go to uh, contour it. So let me get set up for that. I'm going to bring my, I'll get my sander out and we're going to uh, work on this shell. Just let me get set up here. All right, take a look at this shell. This is where the... Uh, the shell meets uh, in the scarf joint 
and you'll see we're missing some wood in this area. It's kind of good that we need to take this contour, so we're going to try to eliminate uh, that point where the wood's gone, and I think we'll have some pretty good success. I'll just put the camera back here because, but I'll zoom you guys in a little bit if I can. Bring you in here a little bit. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. I got a belt sander here, 3x21, and um, it's got, I'd say this is probably 80 grit on here. It's pretty, pretty stout stuff. So I'm just going to lightly skim this right now, and I'm going to hold the sander facing out here, not touching the center so much. Okay, so you see, um, just zoom out a little bit. You'll see I've still got a, a little bit of uh, a problem here and here. But, you know, we've got some sanding to do on the shell anyway, so it's not a big deal. And uh, I'm, you'll notice I'm only working on this side of the drum here. So I'm going to take the shell out and we're going to start measuring it. Let's give it a measure here. This is where we were working on it. And see, we're now we're at 13 and 15 sixteenths. Pretty good. Let me get a, a head that I would use on this drum. Here's an ambassador, you know, I prefer ambassadors. And, you know, it's getting better. So, but I want to know exactly where to go with this. And you can see we've really cut into this shell here. And I really don't want to go anymore. So I'm going to work on around in this area here. You notice I don't keep that sander going all the time. I just kind of give it a little gas and let off the gas.
Now let's check that out. Let me put you guys right here. Let's see if this head will fit on here now. Look at that. The head's starting to fit. Okay, look at that. Is it spinning? No, but almost. So I'm going to figure out where we, we need to work on this. I really don't want to take off any more than I need to. I'll bet it's in this area. And it is. It's right in this area. This is okay over here. Let me see here. This is okay here. This is all right. Yeah, this is this is where we want it. Right above the throw off. Okay. guys in on this not taking too much off just a little bit I mean we can always take it off but we can't add it can we and this is where it was real heavy here It's going on pretty nice. Still got some heaviness somewhere. Yeah, still in the same place, but I'm going to go on the other side to the butt side and work on it. Right about here. coming out pretty good so we're under 14 here we're definitely under 14 here under 14 well under 14 there and here is where we were working and this is where the problem is still so I'm going to Take it down a little bit more on the uh, right near the throw off. Just take a little more off. That way, with that head, will just. Spin. Whoops. Uh, let's work on those two spots once again. We're getting very close to being uh, able to spin that head. that 
Getting pretty nice. Well under 14. Okay, it's heavy here now. It's heavy. Let's go with this area right here. Okay. Let's see where we are now. Oh man, look at that. That head's just dropping on there now. It's still binding a little bit. But don't forget, this is a rough sand. And I'm not going to take it down too much because we've got to change that belt and uh, bring it down a little more to get rid of all this really heavy this scratching here. See all that scratch? You got to take that down. So let me just find out where we're really heavy first. And we're right at just a hair under 14 there. And this is. I think I'd like to take a little bit more off right there. Just a little more. Then we're going to have to work on the other side too. find out about this side now. I'm going to leave that. That's the top side. This is the, um, the bottom side here. I want to see where we're at. Okay, so we know we've got to work around this here. I'm going to take off some in this area here.
I'm just going to make some pencil marks where I think it needs to be taken down. So that would be in this area. a turn. We'll get the rest of it on the next go of the uh, different grit sandpaper. I'm going to uh, change the belt on that belt sander and I'll be right back. Okay, let me show you the, uh, you see these, uh, well you can really see them here. You can see the, where the 80 grit sandpaper lines are and uh, now I'm going to go over it with 120 grit, which is quite a bit lighter. And I'm going to take it down and get rid of these heavy sand marks. And um, that'll be it for the belt sander. We won't need that anymore. And then um, we'll start uh, palm sanding it. So let me just hit that with that. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer. And uh, just watch my technique with the belt sander. Because um, you'll notice the, the machine going on and off. On and off. Because you don't want that to dig into there. So um, I just throttle it. I'm only working on this half of the drum right now. And the middle too. down a little bit because it's jumping around. If you try to uh, sand up too high it, it uh, makes the uh, shell vibrate.
Okay, now I'm going to turn it around and we're going to do the, uh, the snare side. Same thing. If you look closely on the snare side, this, let me put this thing down. If you look closely, this is the side we've sanded. It's very smooth uh, for a belt sander, not finished smooth. And this is where the heavy, uh, coarse sandpaper was. And that's what we're removing right now. get this this cords all wrapped around my stand that I used to uh, hold this camera <laughs> said if you try to get too going too high it wants to bounce about there.
Got to really tighten this thing down in this clamp. Have a let's have a look at this thing now. Bring you guys in a little bit there. I'm going to put this head on here and let's uh, let's see how she fits. that she spins and that's what we want okay that's the top Let's see how the bottom's doing look at that and that's what I do to contour shells so I don't know if you can see the contour let me see if I can it's very slight I mean you can kind of see it it's very slight. It shouldn't. You shouldn't really be able to see it too much. And um, now the rest is going to be done just with a uh, sander and um, sandpaper. Okay, we're back. Boy, it's a couple days later. I've been just so swamped doing other things. But we're going to get to this. Uh, shell today give it a uh, a sand with the uh, the old palm sander and 220 grit and uh, start getting all this rough uh, sand marks out of it and give it its final uh, shaping now that the heads fit really good. So I'll give you a little demonstration of what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing, but just for those that uh, haven't seen some of the videos I've done on um, the sanding of the shells, you know, here's my take. Okay, so I think I've taken quite a bit off of there on just that one panel. I just go between the lugs, one panel I call it. And then I uh, ditch that old sandpaper. I'd, I'd rather uh, just put a new piece on. So you can see the contour slightly. And uh, oh, here's how much uh, dust we've taken, or sanding uh, dust we've taken off that shell. Just thought you might be interested to see you know quite a bit but it needed to happen so uh, we're going to come up with a usable drum after all this and um, i'm going to continue on 
I don't need to bore you with this uh, sanding like watching paint dry. So I'll be back when I'm done with this 220. And I'll show you what I'm going to do next. All right, um, we've uh, completed the first sanding. That's a 220. We've gotten all of our uh, heavy sanding marks out from the 80 grit and the 120. And now we're uh, quite smooth. Um, uh, we're not at the staining stages yet, obviously, or lacquering. But we're well on our way and it feels very smooth. I'm going to go over it with a 320 next, all the way around. And then um, I might go over it with a 4 or a 500 grit, just for a finished sand. But this shell is looking really good. And, um, oh, what I wanted to say was... Um, you know, this process of uh, contouring the shell is great for a solid maple or one-piece maple shell or mahogany one-piece shells. But when you do contour this down on a plywood shell, you're going to lose the top veneer layer. And so uh, that might not be too... Uh, great for a wood finish obviously and then um, maybe if you're going to put a wrap on it it might cause you some difficulty uh, you might have to heat up the wrap to get it to f uh, contour to the contour if you will but um, this process i'm doing here is great for solid wood shells one piece shells so that's what I wanted to say. Be right back. Okay, and you can see you can see the shine on the shell up here. That's how smooth it's getting. It's a little dusty. Uh, that's uh, 320. Uh, we're up to 320 right now. I'm going to go over it with 500 grit right now for my finished sand. This is a, quite a nice shell. Um, I think it's going to turn out really nice. So it's got some beautiful grain to it. Got some bird's eyes in there and um, I think it'll turn out pretty nice. So one thing I was going to suggest uh, when you're sanding these uh, panels, just when you think you've sanded it enough, just give it a little extra. Um, give it another minute of it you use the same piece of paper but it's not going to hurt to just give it a little bit extra kind of like a workout um, or practicing your drums you know give it another few minutes of uh, practicing your double strokes or lifting doing some um, weight lifting you know whatever um, I think that that's going to give it a better look in the end because prep is everything. It's easy to go ahead and shoot it with some clear and call it good. Um, but it's a little bit harder to give it a, a, a better prep. So that's a little suggestion and that's what I do. Okay, look at this. Uh, we have uh, completed our sanding process. Any of this uh, lap joint uh, problem will be filled with lacquer. And I'll show you how to do that later. But that's not a problem right now. We're going to stain this drum. Um, I don't think I've had a stained drum in any of my videos. So we're going to go ahead and do this in a dark walnut. You can see it's shining. It's... Uh, it's very smooth and this should take a stain really well and um, what I've done here is since this drum was under water it had some 
Well, it had dirt from my hands and maybe some glue residue. And I've lightly taken a sanding block like this. And I don't want to go over it too heavily. Just I want to try to get it to look natural like it came out of the factory again. So I've lightly gone over it. And in the end, I'll go over it with some Johnson's Floor Wax, which is a paste wax. And I wax the inside of the shells. So I've taken away any evidence of my work, I guess you could say. There's some light stuff here. I'm not going to go down into it on this rear ring. I'm just going to leave that. Uh, I think that's going to get uh, covered up just fine. Um, so where I'm at right now is... I think I'm going to go ahead and stain the shell right now because what I'm going to want to do after that is let the stain dry but in the meantime while it's drying just for uh, to use my time wisely I'm going to fill in any of these voids here with glue and let them dry uh, very little on the side that I took the ring out but on this side there are more uh, and I'm going to do like I said uh, earlier and maybe in the last video. Uh, you can just put glue in these cracks and uh, glue them up rather than try to clamp them. Because like I said, you can't pull this ring back to get it to glue up against unless you soak it out. And I don't think it's really necessary. But if you think it is, that's fine. And we'll, we'll glue up all this and leave the glue in there and let it dry while our stain is drying. So right now I'm going to get this thing all wiped down. I'm going to get my stain out and we're going to um, stain this drum. Hey guys, sadly it's come to that time of the uh, video that I've got to say goodbye because we got a long way to go on this drum and um, I don't want to keep these videos much more than 50 minutes or, or so. I'll keep them under an hour even though you guys like the extended uh, versions. Um, I just think it gets a little too much and then people just start skipping ahead and all that which is fine. And um, so next time we meet we'll uh, I'll take you through the process of me staining this drum I'm going to re-glue the bottom uh, re-ring uh, on the bottom side. Just going to fill in those gaps in the uh, in the openings there, and then uh, I'm going to redo the edges. I'm going to show you how I do re uh, do redo the edges, and I'm going to put the uh, finish on the drum. Not exactly in that order, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, hey, by the way, I want to tell you guys, thanks a lot for subscribing. Um, getting a lot of new subscribers. I'm surprised. I only started this uh, channel just to kind of share my point of view on what I've learned over the years. And, you know, guys tend to like it. I don't have a whole lot of uh, subscribers, but they keep uh, coming in. So I want to thank you. And um, thanks for the... Uh, Thumbs up. That helps with the uh, YouTube uh, algorithms, I guess. Maybe one of these days I'll make a buck. Maybe not. I don't care. Uh, anyway, until the next time, you take care.